Welcome back to the Sports Fix on Flow FM. We're having lots of fun talking about different issues and that as we do on the Sports Fix. If you want to be a part of it, then get in touch with us. Send us an email to news at flowfm.com.au or get in touch with us via our Facebook page, Flow FM Australia on Facebook. If there's a sport that's happening in your local area that you know no one's going to cover, then tell us because we will. We'll talk about it because that's how much we love our sport. And there is one person that I know that loves sport more than anybody else on the planet, and that is the stat man. Jace, how are you today? Clayton, um, I, I'm not sure I can live up to that uh, fine build-up you just gave me there, but I'll do my best. Well, after what I said about Ellis yesterday, and, um, well, I was told I'd better be nice oh. to people, so I'm, I'm trying. So I'm not t- special after all, okay. Well, you are, but uh, that's a whole new conversation, and uh, we don't want to go oh. there, do we? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh, the AFL instead. Uh, on the Sport Fix uh, tonight, no, the Sports Fix tonight. Let's have a look at uh, the possibility of a 19th and 20th team entering the AFL, Clayton. Now, is this realistic? Um, I mean, you, is this this is not folly. They, they are seriously talking about this. They are, and they have been for a while. Uh, but there is one major complication which has arisen over the past 12 months: a certain virus which has yeah. cost the AFL coffers quite substantially. Look, um, this has been on the table for some time now, and um, there are a few people who've come out more recently to talk about it. Uh, it's all started because um, you may be aware Hawthorne and North Melbourne play some games down in Tasmania fairly yep. regularly. Yep. Uh, that arrangement that those two clubs have with the Tasmanian government is due to expire at the end of this coming season. So at the end of 2021... Um, that that agreement is due to expire. And the Tasmanian government is playing hardball now with the AFL. It wants a licence. It wants an AFL team in Tasmania of its own. And it has said to the AFL and those two clubs that they will not negotiate with Hawthorne and North Melbourne until they have an agreement on the table, one way or the other. Wow. So the the Tassie government sort of standing up. Good on them. I'm glad they're doing that. Is it better to have a new team, or should uh, Hawthorne or North Melbourne decide, well, no, let's relocate, let's become the Tassie team? Well, these are the two options in front uh, of uh, the AFL and Tasmania in general. The Tasmanians have made it fairly clear that they are absolutely wanting their own licence. They want their own team. They want it to be called uh, the Tasmanian Devils, I believe. They've got a jumper all picked out. It'll be green, uh, red and uh, white, I think, is the the, the colours that they want. Uh, green, black and white, in fact, or green, green, black and red even. I think that might actually be the, the right colours there. Uh, third time lucky. But Nick Revolt's involved in the bid. They want a licence and a team by 2025. And uh, there's been quite a few high-profile people speak up about this. Hawthorne obviously have a vested interest in what happens here. Their chairman, Jeff Kennett, interestingly has not ruled out the possibility of Hawthorne relocating down there. Now, um, that is an odd move, given Hawthorne's aversion in the past to mergers and all things yeah. relocation. I don't see their members being too pleased about that. Well, that's what I thought he used as his big trump card was, well, look at our members, why do we need to move anywhere? Well, I would have thought so as well, but uh, apparently uh, he's not. Uh, he's open to looking at it. So that's interesting. I'm not sure how many other people involved in Hawthorne and uh, at board level are interested <laughs> in it. Uh, I don't think there'd be too many. But Alistair Clarkson has taken a different approach, and quite often Alistair Clarkson and Jeff Kennett don't see eye to eye. Clarkson has thrown his support behind the Tasmanian bid. He believes, in fact, the league expansion shouldn't just stop at 19 clubs. He wants a team in the Northern Territory that would make the AFL then a truly national competition. So teams 19 and 20 would be Tasmania and the NC playing out of Darwin. That would be their base, but also utilising Alice Springs quite often. So... I can see that. Um, yeah. All of a sudden, then everyone plays everyone once. Maybe a rivalry round to make uh, 20 rounds a year. It certainly makes things a bit more comfortable from an AFL point of view. But the financing for these clubs, Clayton, is a bit tricky at the moment, given all of the money that the AFL has lost due to COVID. 
Absolutely, all that money that they were sort of banking on to bankroll all this expansion. But hang on, you, you said Tassie, Northern Territory, but we still don't have a team at uh, in the Australian Capital Territory. Well, no, we don't. Uh, but I think the AFL are quite comfortable with GWS utilising Marnica for several home games a year as they have up until this point and, and saying that's a bit of exposure. I know it's not the same as them having their own team, but... Um, I think they're basically saying that GWS is a, is a mixture between Western Sydney and um, the ACT as it stands, and they're quite comfortable with that arrangement. So I think then you've got representation everywhere. Well, I think it's uh, on the surface. I think I like the idea. I think it's a, a good one. I really do like it. I just wonder, though, I'm, I'm sure that there are lots of players out there and uh, who are looking at going, well, there's a potential, and young kids thinking, well, there is 20 teams that I can buy for to try and be, um, you know, live my AFL dream. But by doing that, are we going to see the, the quality of gameplay increase or are we going to see it sort of decrease a little bit, Jace? What's How do you see that? Oh, well, it'll decrease. Uh, anytime you add new teams into a competition and dilute the pool of talent um, and add, you know, obviously more players in, it will absolutely decrease um, the quality of, of football, uh, at least initially, until population catches up. Um, that's that's uh, obviously what's going to happen. And, um, of course, then you dilute the quality of coaching and, and all kinds of things at board level as well. So uh, there's no doubt that, obviously, the more positions, if you've got 20 CEOs that you're looking for instead of 18, uh, well, there's two more people that wouldn't normally have a job that actually have a job. So... Uh, there was a reason they weren't selected in the first 18 in the first place, Clayton. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I like that. Well, so you're in favour of it? You want to see a 20-team comp? No, uh, I'd like to see less teams. Um, <laughs> I think the, the answer here is relocation. Um, yeah, and okay. I, I've said this all along. I think North Melbourne should go to Tasmania. Um, Hawthorne can stay where they are. Uh, but I'd be sending the Gold Coast Suns to the Northern Territory. I think that Gold Coast experiment has failed. There is no yeah. interest in AFL football on the Gold Coast. And if there is, it should be diverted to the Brisbane Lions anyway. Why would we want to dilute their supporter base? So um, I think the AFL royally stuffed up bringing the Gold Coast Suns in. I can see what they were doing with GWS. I have less of a problem with GWS than I do with the Gold Coast Suns. Um, The reality is Queensland is rugby league heartland. Uh, take the Gold Coast Suns, move them to Northern Territory, call them the Northern Territory Suns, base them out of Darwin, have them play day games in Alice Springs, and I think everyone's happy. Yep, that, that works for me. I'm, I've got no, no issue with that either. I'd, I'd be happy either way as long as there is an improvement in the game. And then I think that'll yep. be, yeah, you know, I think that'll be good. But I do want to see a team in Tassie. I really do. I think that'll be good. Yeah, for I the do too. And I, and I don't think just because North Melbourne would relocate down there, and I know there are kangaroo fans listening today to the Sports Fix, smashing their radios at the moment. And I'm sorry about that. And uh, it's not that they're financially unviable because quite uh, uh, from what we're told off the field, they're going quite well. But the reality is their supporter base is the lowest in Victoria. There are too many clubs in Melbourne, no <laughs> doubt about that. Yep. They have a, an existing relationship with Tasmania, particularly Hobart, uh, which is where, obviously, the new club would need to be based. It would probably play out of Launceston as well, uh, but you'd want to be based at Hobart. Um, and the reality is I think they would lose their name and probably their moniker. I don't think you could call them the Tasmanian Kangaroos. I think they would be the Tasmanian Devils. Um, I would wear different colours, but the licence would be the North Melbourne licence. So um, I guess you could say effectively it would be a, a folding of North Melbourne and, a, and the start of a new club. If we could see something happening in Tassie, I'm all for it, whatever, whatever way it goes, mm. whatever way it goes. Uh, now, just before I let you go, um, what's this about uh, our English friends not being too happy at the moment? Well, the term whinging palms has been brought up again, and I must say... Um, I'm not sure what I think about this because I, I look at the, t- the pictures that get served up in India sometimes and I shake my head. Um, I shake my head for a number of reasons. We see games in the IPL played in India where, you know, 440 runs are scored in 40 overs and you think, gee whiz, a batting paradise. And then they dish up some stuff in test matches that just basically looks like a sandpit. Mm. But Michael Vaughan has been very outspoken about the quality of the pitch that... Uh, saw the English rolled twice inside two days and beaten inside two days in a test match, which is hilarious, um, if not a little sad. Yep. 
But uh, it must be said, the players themselves haven't spoken out about this, but clearly Michael Vaughan is getting it from somewhere. He's got connections to the playing and coaching group. There's whispers coming out of there that uh, the Englishmen weren't too impressed with the pitch that India dished up. Um, and my, my initial thoughts on it are, well, you've got to play well in all conditions to be a very well-rounded test player. Um, the English... Don't mind serving up green tops when India come to England. So what's the difference? Um, and we get that the same sort of situation in Australia. We tend to serve up seeming wickets that have a bit of bounce when the Indians come to Australia. And when we go over there, we expect things that are going to turn square. So yeah. I don't necessarily have a problem with what the uh, Indians did. We all know uh, when, you, when you're when you playing at home, you try and utilise the conditions to your advantage as best you can. So I think the Poms best just shut up and play cricket. If only they would, Jace. If only they would. Into- if only they would. But uh, we'll see how they go in the fourth test. Obviously, Australia is barracking for them to tie the series because then we can go to Lords and play the Kiwis. Yeah, well, that'll be fun. That'll be an interesting match and we'll enjoy that too. All right, we better leave it there, Jace. We'll catch up more with you tomorrow on the Sports Fix. And um, thank you for your time. And we've still got to catch up with our good friend Dan, Dan the basketball man. He's got something to say about two sports stars having a crack at each other, but they're from different sports, but one of them is a basketball player. That's coming up next on the Sports Fix.